Is it really possible for a dividend stock investor, a dividend income investor, to actually beat the NASDAQ in overall portfolio value, but also with paying dividends, like legitimate dividends? What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor Channel. My name is Joe, and in this video, we are exploring an investment that a number of people on the channel recommended to me that I, I, I they asked my opinion, I didn't really know. I said I'd look into it, and I gotta say, I really had my doubts, especially when I saw the expense ratio on it, And so, I, but I decided to go into it with an open mind, and I said, let's see how this fund actually performs. And I was pretty surprised here. In this video, guys, we're breaking down two different funds. They are closed-end funds, and they are the BlackRock Science and Technology Trust, BST and the BlackRock Science and Technology Trust 2, BSTZ. In this video, guys, I'm gonna break down for you what these two different investments are, what their current dividend yield is, what the holdings are in this portfolio, and ultimately how, and this is the part I'm sure you really wanna hear more about, how do these funds perform in the past, and is it really possible, is it even within the realm of possibility that a dividend stock or a fund that has current income, can it actually outperform the NASDAQ and the S&P 500? <gasps> Let's find out. guys, Joe here. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button below the video to make sure you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you do click that subscribe button, make sure to leave me a comment below saying you subscribed and I promise to personally respond to your comment. All right guys, let's take a look here at these two different funds to see if we can understand how they work, how they operate, why are they so unique? So first we've got the BlackRock Science and Technology Trust, BST. Current price, as of September 3rd, $55.30 per share. It's got a distribution rate, dividends, 4.9%. That's an annual distribution rate. So let's go ahead and dive in here to this investment approach. So the BlackRock Science and Technology Trust is a perpetual closed end equity fund. Now really quick, I'm gonna stop right there, make sure we understand the difference. Most ETFs are known as open-ended ETFs, and same with most mutual funds are open-ended, meaning that as people buy into the fund and as people redeem their shares, more shares or less shares are created or taken away. That is not the case with a closed-end fund. At the time of the initial offering, a certain amount of shares, a finite amount of shares are created and there are no more created. And then the price changes and fluctuates based on the actual price, just like a stock does. But what could be interesting is there could be fluctuations or differences between what somebody's willing to pay, market price, versus what the actual assets are worth, net asset value. So you could have a closed end fund that trades at a premium more than the assets are worth or a discount where it's trading for less than what the assets are worth. Just like a stock does too, based on you know book value per share. You know, sometimes people pay more for a stock than the actual um, actual company is worth because there is uh, an assumption that in the future it's gonna be worth even more. Same thing with closed end funds. BST commenced operations in October 2014 with the investment objectives of providing income and total return through a combination of current income, current gains, and long-term capital appreciation. 80% of its assets in equity securities issued by the U.S. and non-U.S. science and technology companies in any market cap range, selected for their rapid and sustainable growth potential from the development, advancement, and use of science and or technology, and or potential to generate current income from advantageous dividend yields. So what's interesting here, as, and this is where the actual dividend income, I think for the most part comes into play. It says here, as part of its investment strategy, the trust intends to employ a strategy of writing, which is known as selling, covered call options on a portion of the common stocks in the portfolio. So, you know, we talked about QYLD on the channel where, you know, they write 100% of options on the underlying assets. What they're not talking about here is, they're not talking about that at all. They're talking about a portion of the portfolio, probably when it's advantageous at times, to write covered calls. So they seek to access current, leaders and emerging winners in the technology sector, and they intend to write call options on the underlying equity portfolio, potentially reducing the fund's volatility. So we're talking about a really focused and concentrated bunch of companies here. It's science and technology. Let's go ahead and scroll down here. These are amazing results, by the way. One year return of 53% on total return, market price 65%, three year return, 30%, five year return, 38%, and since inception in 2014, I believe, 25.84%, uh, that is amazing. Coming down here, you can see that distributions have actually gone up 
since December of 2020. There are 1.84 billion assets in this specific closed end fund. Now it does have an expense ratio guys, that's just the reality, that's what initially turned me off thinking, you know, I just don't even want to touch a fund that's got an expense ratio of 1.09%. Most everything I invest in has very low expense ratios, none at all, or maybe one that's, you know, around 50 to 60%, which is what I have with QYLD. 128 holdings here, 1.09% expense ratio, which is deducted from the net asset value. One of the things I love about this specific closed end fund, and one that you're not gonna see a lot of, it does happen, but it's not common, is to see closed end funds that do not use leverage or debt to expand the returns, but also expands the risk. So there's no leverage with this fund, which I really like. And percent overwritten, only 28%, meaning that they're only utilizing options on 28% of the portfolio. And like I said here, distribution rate is 4.9%. The options that are being written are on individual single stocks. Here are the top 10 holdings here. Apple makes up 3.33%. We've got Microsoft at 3.22. Alphabet, or which is known as Google, 2.4. We've got Project Kafka, Ordinary Shares, 2.02. Amazon, Marvell, Marvell Technology, PayPal Holdings, MasterCard, ASML Holding. And you can see the exposure here breaks down 60% in the United States, but also we've got South Korea, the Netherlands, China, United Kingdom, Sweden, Japan, all over the globe. So that's BST. Let's take a look at BSTZ, which is a little bit different. BSTZ is the Science and Technology Trust too. So what makes up the difference here? So this one has a very similar distribution rate, 4.83%. And as of September 3rd, it is trading at a 4.63% discount, meaning it's cheaper than its actual assets. Going down even further, it says here, this is a limited term closed end equity fund. Commenced operations in June of 2019, so it's relatively young still. Same type of objective, total return and income through a combination of blah, 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 blah. But it says here, they're gonna use call options as well, covered call options. Now, one unique element to this trust is that it says it, it wants to access the private market. So the fund seeks to invest up to 25% of its assets in private companies, which could lead to more risk, but also higher returns. So that's the big difference there. Scrolling down, we can see great returns on just the one year return. One year return, 92.64% since inception, 51.59. Great returns. Distributions going up here as well in the most recent fiscal year, as you can see right here. Now this one has a higher expense ratio, 1.33%, and it's got 126 holdings. It trades currently, like I said, at a discount, 4.63%, and it was created in June of 2019. 3.47 billion in assets in this fund. Again, no leverage. I love that fact about this one here. And then like I said, distribution right here, 4.83%, and the, the percent overwritten, only 20.66%. Here are the top 10 holdings here. Project Kafka Ordinary Shares, Cacao, uh, Project Debussy, or Debussy, I'm not sure, Marvell, Snap, Project Sibelius, Twilio, Square, Project Picasso, Laser Tech. So you're noticing that some of the larger tech companies are not on the list here. Now they might have a weighting in the portfolio, but it's not any big weighting like we saw in, the, in BST. We can see the exposure breakdown based on area here. United States is 58%, then we've got South Korea, Japan, UK, Sweden, China, Brazil, the Netherlands. We go by sector here, it is 48% in software. 18% in semiconductors, 11% or 12% in media and entertainment, and then very little in autos and components, consumer services. 52% of the fund is in 10 billion or larger companies, 16% in two to 10 billion, 27% in less than two billion. So I think we have a feel here for these two different closed end funds. Uh, we're not loving the expense ratio, but we like the returns. Let's see how these um, closed end funds compared against both the NASDAQ, which we're gonna use QQQ, and the S&P 500. Because we love the fact that it's got a distribution rate, right? The total returns, including those dividends, are really great. And we'll see how these funds perform when we just look at price history alone. We'll look at how the um, returns compare when we are utilizing uh, reinvested dividends, and we'll just see how they compare, and if it's truly possible. I'm still thinking maybe not possible, but let's see if they can actually beat the NASDAQ. All right, so here we've got BST's price history. This is BST. Then we've got BSTZ over here. This spreadsheet, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention to you, all of my spreadsheets are available in the Patreon community. So if you would love to get more dividend content, follow my own portfolio, be able to ask me questions, go over things as a community, check out the link in the description below. You can join right now for as little as $10 a month. So here's BSTZ, and we also, like I said, have BST right here. 
You can see it started right around $20 a share, and since then it went down a little bit, and then it popped up quite a bit, and then it had a major COVID drop, and then it's just taken off since COVID. Same thing with BSTZ, although we have a lot less price history right here, starting at 20, popped up a little bit, came down for COVID right here, and then it's been on a tear since then. So what we did is I went ahead and took the data right here for the BlackRock Science and Technology Trust 1, and then the NASDAQ Composite, and the S&P 500 here, and took the data back from 10 of 2014. We looked at doing a lump sum investment, and just, again, I've talked about this on the channel, I don't expect everyone to have $100,000, it's just, it's easier to magnify the returns with $100,000 just to show the differences and the intricacies between the investments. That's the only reason why I'm using 100, I'll show you that I can drop it to 50 or 1,000 here in a second. Um, but we've got our lump sum investments right here. We've got our lump shares, and our lump shares when we reinvest dividends, and then we've got our lump sum value, and our lump sum value if we reinvest the dividends along the way. Same up the same thing here for NASDAQ from the same exact day starting October 29th, 2014, and the same for the S&P 500 right over here. And we can see I've got the, every single price here, and then as dividends get paid, then it changes the share count if we are reinvesting dividends. All right, let's take a look first here. We've got BST versus NASDAQ versus S&P 500 on the chart. Okay, so here we've got, like I said, just price history alone. We're not utilizing reinvesting dividends. How do these funds perform? We've got the blue is BST, the NASDAQ is orange, and then S&P 500 is gray. We can see here, that they start here and BST takes a drop here and is underperforming both indexes for about three years. We can start here, we're at 100. We drop down to as low as, what is this, right down here? It's like uh, right around uh, 70,000. We come back up again and then BST starts to make some headway here and passes the S&P 500 and almost overtakes the NASDAQ here. We've got down here a little small correction in 2018 that occurred. They were all very close together the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and BST. And then we come up again, we can see that BST is underperforming the NASDAQ here. Then we have our COVID drop, and then BST takes off along with the com NASDAQ composite, almost outperforms it right up here, and then settles in between the two. At the end result here, we've got the uh, NASDAQ worth, what, 381 after that time period starting with 100. Then we've got BST worth 274 and the S&P 500 worth 229. Now one thing you should note here, if we go down here to the bottom of these results, we can look here, if we take a sum of all of the dividends, let me just go ahead and do that real quick. You can see here over that term, $84,000 in dividends were paid to BST, whereas for the NASDAQ here, we're only at $9,507.15. And then for the S&P 500, we only have $18,000 right here. So. I mean, that's a massive difference in where the returns are coming from, but it's still almost outperforming. But one thing I like I mentioned here on the chart, this did not include reinvesting dividends. Let's just assume that $84,000 was just paid out and not used. In fact, if we included the $84,000, we'd be much closer up here to where the NASDAQ was. But now we have to account for reinvesting dividends, and let's see if that puts BST over the top or not. Shut the front door. Here we've got it. Reinvested dividends on a lump sum investment. So we're starting with 100. We can see here just like before, BST underperformed down here. And then finally, it kind of shot to the top from 2016. It was in third place all the way here to 2018. It's at the top. We have our correction in 2018, but BST stays ahead of the NASDAQ, stays above it here. Down in, for COVID here, they're almost the same. And then we see that BST outperforms the NASDAQ. Final results here for BST was 430,000 at the end of the period versus 404 by $26,000. We can see the S&P 500 just you know, didn't perform as well as the other two. So we can see here that over that seven year time frame, seven year time frame, BST outperformed the NASDAQ. We have no idea how it would have performed before that. We just have the data available now. But man, that's a, a very unique and interesting way to get to capture science and technology as a dividend investor, capture some capital appreciation, yes, but also get some really great dividends. All right, let's take a look at BSTZ, okay? We don't have as much price history here, but we can see the price history for BSTZ starting in June of 2019. We can see the big drop here for COVID, and then it just kind of takes off from there, a low of what, 12 or $11 a share here, 12.77, to a high of over $40 per share just a year and a half later. We've got four funds here. We're gonna look at BST right here. We've also got the NASDAQ. We've got the S&P 500 here, and we also have the BlackRock 
Science and Technology Trust 2. We're gonna see all four how they perform with the short time frame. I appreciate that. It's a short time frame, but we'll see how they perform. Interestingly enough here, this is not reinvesting dividends. So this is BST versus BSTZ, NASDAQ, S&P 500. Lump sum investment, $100,000, and not reinvesting any dividends here. Go ahead and zoom in here a little bit so we can see right here. Started down here, we were all about the same. BST underperformed, whereas, well, who's gray? I forgot who gray is. Gray is the NASDAQ, so yellow is S&P 500, so blue and red are our BST funds. So blue and red here, they underperformed both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ over this time frame. We had our massive COVID drop, like we did with just about everything. Worst performer here, down here, BST. S&P 500 and BSTZ were almost equal here. And then from there, we zoom up here, we can see that the S&P 500 just kind of stagnates here and, and is growing for sure, but not as high as the others. Reinvesting, not reinvesting dividends. Blue and red are working pretty close together here, the BST funds. And at the end of the day, what outperformed with not even reinvesting dividends? BSTZ had 206 compared to the NASDAQ at 204, so not even reinvesting the dividends. We were outperforming, not even including the dividends. We're not even including the dividends at all. And we have an outperformance of the NASDAQ by this dividend stock. And then down here is BST, which underperformed here without reinvesting dividends. It was worth, during that time frame, 174. So how do they perform if we reinvest the dividends? All right, here's BST versus BSTZ, NASDAQ, S&P 500, lump sum investment, reinvesting the dividends, guys. Look at this, colors are different. Just be on the lookout for that. We got blue and red. Blue is, the, is BST. Yellow is BSTZ, the NASDAQ is red, gray is S&P 500. I'm not trying to trick you guys, it's just how it worked out here. S&P 500, as we expected, fourth place down here. Third place is just about almost the NASDAQ here. Although we have our COVID drop here, you know, blue and yellow were really performing strong here. Although BSTZ really outperformed here in the past, what, we'll call that like the last six months? Less than that, the last two or three months, BSTZ stayed strong whereas uh, BST dropped down below here and it's just a fraction below the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's at 207, BST at 204, whereas BSTZ is way up here at 230. I was very skeptical. I will admit that I was very skeptical before I looked at these. I'm really strongly considering adding, um, not sure yet, between BST and BSTZ. Um, I'm really looking at adding one of those two to my portfolio to, to capture a little bit more science and technology aspect. Most of my dividends are coming from consumer discretionary, uh, from materials, uh, consumer staples, things like that. Um, and I'd really like to capture some from science and technology, but it's, it's hard to capture dividend yield. I've got like Avgo and maybe one other one in science technology. I want to get your two cents, guys. What do you think about these funds? What do you think about this performance? Obviously, you know, past performance is no guarantee of future performance, but you know, this is very intriguing. It's a great way to capture both capital appreciation and dividend yield and also keeping to your standard strategy. So make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below, guys. Want to know what your thoughts are on this. What other videos you want to see here? Are there other funds out there that are performing like this that you want to see more about? Let me know in the comments below. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day, and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.